When in doubt, Pippin, always follow your nose. Hey guys, welcome back to Not One Videos. You've just had a very short glimpse of the payoff of a project that I've been working on for the last couple of months. A fully interactive balanced tomb book nook complete with lighting and smoke effects. This is a project that I've been mulling over in my head for quite some time and one of the key components was that I wanted the book nook to incorporate a set of Games Workshop Fellowship minis and for them to be integrated into the project with the effects. I love the sculpting on the GW minis based around the characters in the Peter Jackson series and thankfully they have a set that closely matches some of the poses from the balanced tomb fight scene, especially Gimli, but more about that later. The only problem was that I wanted a nicely painted set and I didn't have a clue how to paint minis. So for me 2021 became the year I finally sat down and learned how to paint. Gladly over the last year or so of making YouTube videos I've made some friends who were more than happy to jump in and show me the ropes. Having the ability to get some pro tips from these guys who have been painting minis for years meant that I have ended up painting myself a set of fellowship minis that I am not embarrassed about, all whilst drinking far too much whiskey. Please support these guys channels, they all create awesome content and you can find the links for them all in my recommended channel section on my YouTube homepage. I wanted to leave my favourite character to last, Sam Gamgee. For me Sam is the personification of true friendship and he also fights with a frying pan in Balanced Tomb which is simultaneously hilarious and totally badass. With my fellowship painted I came to a realisation, if I'm going to include a cave troll and some Moria goblins in this project, I'm gonna need some help. Hey man, how's it going? Hey, how's it going man? Um, a bit of a random one for you. I'm actually phoning for a little bit of help if possible. Go for it, hit me. What can I do for you? Um, so I've just finished up painting um, my fellowship minis. Um, it's part of a project that I'm doing. I'm making Balanced Tomb at the minute. Um, and I was going to paint some Moria goblins and a troll. Uh, but man, I, I'm basically way behind on my build and there's no way I'm ever going to get that done as well and I was wondering if you maybe fancy painting some minis for me? Sounds like an awesome project. Um, I've got some really badly painted ones here but this is a great opportunity for me to pick up some fresh ones and uh, give them a brand new paint job so yeah, count me in. That'd be awesome man. Cool. Can't wait to no see No worries. This. Catch up with you soon mate. Cheers. Bye. So I said to Benji that I was way behind on my build, truth is I hadn't even really started. I kind of got sucked into the whole mini painting side of things as I tend to do when I come across another enjoyable aspect of the hobby. Benji however knows what he is doing and he has also released a video today all about painting the Moria Goblins and Cave Troll on his channel Benji's Hobbies. I have put a link for you guys in the description below, trust me it is well worth checking out. Anyway, on with the build. For anyone who's curious about the wood that I'm using for building the box, this is 3mm thick MDF. I actually got mine for free from the backing of an old picture frame that had fallen apart. Now when it comes to book nooks there seems to be a pretty standard way of doing things, a rectangular box that is relatively narrow, kind of like the Nazgul book nook that I made last year. This time however I really wanted to change things up a bit and not be bound by the conventional ways of making book nooks. I wanted to make my box wide enough to display my minis in a really clear and impactful way that also captures the balanced tomb cave troll fight scene. Also I wanted the space to feel open, almost like you could dive into the scene. So I decided on a double width box with no ceiling so that the book nook not only looks good from the front but also if you're looking down into the scene. In my head I'm imagining comments about taking up too much space on the bookshelf etc but for me the whole idea of a book nook is to create a world on your shelf that you feel like you could step into and for this project I didn't want to give myself any limitations. Another feature that I had very clear in my mind before I got started was that I wanted to incorporate lights, specifically the beam of light that is cast from the window in the back wall of Balanced Tomb in the movie. That beam of light being cast down is such an iconic image and it really helps to make the tomb itself become the real focal point of the whole entire scene. It also looks absolutely epic when Gimli leaps up onto the tomb and is literally begging for a fight with the oncoming onslaught of Moria goblins. And that got me thinking, how can I make this interactive? Thankfully recently John Lombardi over at Tabletop Witchcraft has been doing some awesome things with lights and specifically reed switches enabling lights to be triggered by magnets and bingo with that idea successfully pinched we are well on our way to an interactive special effects book nook. Okay so this is my rough setup I've kind of measured everything out I've got the, the hole cut in the right place for the window for the light to come through and yeah 
my plan is to put a reed switch inside the tomb and a magnet in the base of Gimli so that whenever Gimli stands on, like it'll be kind of like this, uh, put him on, boom, and the light will go on. And then whenever you take him off, the light will go off. But that's the plan. As anyone who has been following my channel for a while now will know, when it comes to electronics and lighting, I've always kept things super basic. I mean, LED flicker tea light basic. But for this project, I really wanted to up my game. Not to make a cool video, but just to get better at making stuff. So I really spent a lot of time researching and learning how to wire things up properly. Gladly, it's not as complicated as I first feared. Science works, so as long as you follow some basic principles, I'm pretty sure anyone could do this stuff with a little practice. I mean, there are certain things that I learned by making mistakes, like when I ran my LEDs in a chain as opposed to running them in parallel, which resulted in weakening the glow of the bulbs, etc. I haven't included any of that footage here, but trust me, mistakes were made and lots of hair pulling happened. Also, for this video, I decided that the voiceover was not going to be a tutorial on electronics because, frankly, there are other YouTubers out there who can explain it far better than I ever could. All that needs to be said is that reed switches are freaking awesome. With my reed switches in place, I was able to glue the top slab of my tomb into place and move on to including more lights to add a little more atmosphere in the project. Okay, so I'm starting to make progress with uh, my lights, etc. Um, you can see that I have taken my LED string and I have separated it into two separate channels. So I've got two separate strings of five lights and I have installed them at the front. So this is gonna cast light up and hopefully create some shadows within the book nook and then the other light at the back will be casting down onto the tomb and I'm hoping it's going to look all kind of eerie and mysterious. A quick last check of the reed switches. Once I glue this thing together there will be no getting them out right onto the beam of light that comes from the back of the room. I really wanted this to be quite a focused beam so I pinched this sewing light from my wife's sewing kit so that I could narrow out the beam and make sure that the light just lands on the central tomb. I also had to make sure that the beam was cast at exactly the right angle, so after making some measurements I cut some XPS foam to make a makeshift holder that would hold the light at exactly the right angle and I glued it into place. Then it was finally time to start cutting foam and build the layout and structure of the room, but to save you guys from watching me make endless cuts on the Proxon, here are all the bits that I need for the build. As you can see, the shapes that I'm using in this build are really simple and easy to cut. Dwarven architecture is extremely symmetrical. One thing I do need though is Dwarven pillars. Okay, so I put all of my bits into the project. Nothing's glued yet. I'm still trying to figure out a few bits and pieces here and there. Um, of course, I have carved up some of my Dwarven pillars um, that I want to put into the project but I want them to be interchangeable so that I can put a different design in there as well. So I'm going to put some magnets in these and these will be able to sit into the project and also be removed. And the reason why I want to remove them is I have another design. So this design is from a drawing that I did. I sent the drawing to my friend Tina Martins when she was working on the Mines of Moria. Um, and she sent this drawing to Gerard Boom, who in the space of 24 hours turned it into a jig. And he has sent me the jig that he made of my pillar design. Okay, so this is a very quick demonstration on how to use the Dwarven Pillar Jig that was sent to me by Gerard Boom. You can pop out perfectly carved Dwarven Pillars in a matter of minutes. Just look at these poor little hand carved pillars slowly coming to the realization that they might be out of a job. Sad times, don't worry lads, your time will come. You can see here how the detail is added to these pillars. The additional shapes are simply carved using a complementary jig and then the pieces are glued into place with PVA glue, resulting in this really nice symmetrical authentic dwarven pillar design. It was at this point that the whole build started to open up and move in a fun new direction. Hey Jared, how are you? Hi, Michael. I'm fine. How are you? I'm doing really, really well, thanks. Um, okay, great. What, what, what are you up to? Um, I'm crafting some little buttress thingies for my new build that is growing in a terrible way. <laughs> it, I mean, is, it's getting big. <laughs> is this some um, super top secret stuff? Actually, um, you know, we've discussed a possible workshop in London. Yeah. 
So I thought about, hey, if I come to England, I must build something that is typical English. And okay, okay, cool, cool, cool. oh, I made a huge mistake because I am going wild. This is so <laughs> cool. All in good time. Cool. I look forward to hearing more about that. Yeah, for sure. yeah absolutely. And um, the, the reason why I'm calling is I just yeah. wanted to say thank you so much um, for the pillar jigs that you sent me. Um, You're most welcome. Absolutely brilliant. And I've already put them to good use. As you can oh, see. Yes, man. So originally I was going to use these ones yep. in my project. Um, but whenever Tina sent you that design, yeah. Um, Basically, this looks pretty much identical to the picture that I drew. And yes, and they, my my honest opinion, I think they fit better in your build. And I agree. And, I agree. And, and, and as you already noticed, um, I also added another design within right. the pillar jig, so you can make two different types of columns, whatever type you like, right? I was drawing uh, that pillar jig and I thought, well, it would be a shame to copy paste it to the other side. Why don't make a total different kind of dwarven pillar? And now we have two different pillars in one jig. That's cool, right? That's perfect. So have you actually, you've seen um, some photographs that I've sent to you of the current project where it's currently at and stuff? Yes, uh, and absolutely, absolutely cool. And uh, yeah, it really um, triggered me. I, I okay, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm building. I'm building here outside. If the weather is fine, I build here five, six e uh, evenings a week. But um, building something like that project that you are working on right now is also very interesting, um, especially since I've made the jig. Um, I, I thought, oh, it would be cool to also make uh, something like that. Well, if if you're up for it, I mean, we could. Uh, how would you feel about maybe collaborating slightly on the project? You mean like um, building together on on the tomb? Yeah, something like that. I mean, maybe yeah. maybe I can okay. send you the yes. measurements of my box, and oh, yeah, yeah, and then you got the similar sort of design, yeah, and we can both just build it together, maybe something like that. Oh, that, that's that's really cool. Um, and the box is what is it? The shoe box? What is it? It's MDF, so it's three mil thick MDF. Okay. Oh, oh, that's that's easy. I mean, if I get the measurements, I can cut them myself and build at the exact same size, um, which is actually quite cool. I mean, um, if you build, uh, you've made the layout, right? And the layout yeah. is is there. So I can send that all to you. Yeah, sure. But how cool would it be if you put your own artistic ideas in that layout and I put mine in it? In the end, from a distance, they look the same, but in the detail, in the structure, uh, I could use the other kinds of pillars, for instance. That would be awesome. Yeah, I'd love that. Oh, that would be cool. Oh, yeah, that's, that's fun. That's a cool idea. I like that, Michael. You know what? That that's so cool. I mean, so we we have a box. Yep. Um, I've seen your 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 sides are a little bit crumbling down. Yeah. Which is which is kind of cool. Uh, so it's a box that is also crumbling down, right? Yep. Um, we have a pillar jig. Um, we have the measurements. We have the the drawings. Um, it's it's almost a building kit, right? It is almost a building kit. Yep, that would be awesome if it was building kit. Yeah, yeah, and 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 if we craft along the way, we we might be getting silly ideas that we could add. So um, uh, let's start building and see where this goes. So there we go. Just like that, this project became a fun collaboration with Jared Boom from Shifting Lands. And as you heard in that conversation, yes, Jared will be coming to London to do a workshop this year. But more about that at the end of the video. It really was the coolest thing for Jared to jump on board with this project. Straight away we started crafting together in the evenings and to be honest it was only about 24 hours before Gerard had turned my measurements and sketches into a box and he caught up with me at lightning speed. 
Also, pretty much immediately, some of Jared's input began to influence the direction of my own build. And you might ask, did I pick up any cool new tips and tricks from Jared while I was crafting? And of course, the answer is yes. I had originally planned for this project to be a quick build to make a video for YouTube, but Gerard encouraged me to slow down a bit and pay attention to the details and really make it a build to be proud of. You can see here me adding some extra layers of foam to create additional arches at the back. This is just one of the cool ideas that I might have missed had Gerard not come on board. Gerard is a master at creating depth in foam modelling and these arches, although not present in the movie set, just scream dwarven architecture. It's amazing how the simplest of details can really enhance the look of a project. And that's one of the biggest lessons that I learned. Don't just settle for your first set of really cool ideas. Constantly ask yourself the question during the build process, how can I make this thing better? With my awesome new arches in place, I moved on to adding all of the fine trimming and detailing that I'd originally planned within the build. Normally, I'm a very impatient crafter and I would often resort to just gluing everything super quick with hot glue so that I can churn out more videos. But for this project, I pretty much glued everything with PVA glue and pinned it in place. And here is the maiden voyage of my new favorite tool, a handheld hot wire foam cutter. This is such a useful tool. So if you're interested in getting one, there is a link in the description below this video. Oh, and this additional little wall right here, that's another one of Jared's cool ideas. So this is a perfect opportunity to introduce yet another collaborator on this build, the Broken Sword YouTube channel. When I'm building projects in the evening, I love nothing more than tuning in to the latest video from these guys and immersing myself in the lore of Middle Earth. There is so much of Tolkien's work that can be unpicked, so many interesting backstories and connections to delve into, and it's a perfect way to make your crafting experience more immersive as you try to bring a piece of that world to life. So when I started to build Balanced Tomb, I contacted them straight away and asked if they would be interested in compiling a lore video around the topic. So today they have released a video around the Mines of Moria and Balanced Tomb to accompany this project and I cannot wait to watch it. So please take the time to subscribe to their channel and check out that video and I know it will be very cool indeed. Okay, back to the project. It would be really cool if you could show me the texture with uh, the pencil for, for the ground that, that, that you do, if, you're, if that's okay. Ah. With Gerard on board with the project, I saw it as an opportunity to raise the bar with my own crafting. I had the privilege of being able to call Gerard and get many tutorials as we went along, and he was more than happy to sit down and show me some new techniques that I'd never tried before. One of my favourite new tricks was how to create carved rock textures with a pencil as if it had been carved by miniature dwarves with pickaxes. This technique, alongside the old favourite tinfoil ball trick, again helped me to add another level of depth and realism to the build. Originally I had planned to carve some dwarven runes into the top of the central tomb with a pin, but when I mentioned this to Gerard he said, hang on a minute, let me carve you something with a laser cutter, resulting in yet another level up for the build. I love the little topper for the tomb, it's perfect. Cool, cool. And actually, as you look very closely, you will see that the runes are the real runes. Yes, they are the real runes, yeah. I did see that. Having fun? I'm having a whole lot of fun. <laughs> it wouldn't make any sense for me to do a project with shifting lands and not use some of Gerard's awesome Proxon tools, so when it came to making the well at the back of the tomb, I used Gerard's shape cutter. This thing makes cutting perfect shapes into foam extremely easy. You simply place your foam onto the pins, make your cut, rotate the foam and cut again. In the movie, the well is octagonal, so this was the perfect tool for the job. Once you have your shape cut, you can make the shape smaller just by shaving off the sides until you reach your desired width. I am planning on making a quick tutorial video soon on how to make an octagonal well, so I haven't included the rest of the footage here. Okay, it turns out you actually do get smoke without fire. So I'm going to quickly show you the smoke machine that I am going to be putting into my balanced tomb and that is the Cosatronica smoke from Wayne's Workshop. Just to tell you guys that this is not a paid sponsorship, I did pay for this Cosatronica smoke myself but Wayne did also send me the pocket smoke so I could show you guys smoke. Okay so this is a seriously cool little project that's going to help you bring your tabletop uh, terrain to life. Um, it's probably going to be easier if I zoom in and show you some of its features so let's take a look. Straight off the bat, one of the coolest features on the Cosatronic Smoke is the remote control function. This means that you can easily trigger your smoke effects at opportune moments during encounters in your game, taking players by complete surprise. 
Not only that, but you have complete control over the amount of smoke that this thing pumps out, so you can fill your table with a full on cloud or a light fog effect if you prefer. Now the pocket smoke is also very cool, it is the more affordable option but it really doesn't have the same versatility as the Cosatronica. You have to operate this thing manually and you only get one option in terms of the amount of smoke that it pumps out. Both of the smokers come with these handy adapters so you can attach tubing which enables you to run the smoke to specific locations on your tabletop or in your costume if you're a cosplayer. It's really easy to attach, just push your tube into the hole and it will grip into place. If you want to split the stream of your smoke so that you can add the effect to multiple locations, you can get these little clip-ons that do the job perfectly. I actually do this in my balance tomb build, which you will see in the final reveal. The handy thing about these little adapters is they are easy to attach and remove, making it easy to attach other cool accessories such as this blanket smoker attachment. This add-on is really effective for creating a more dispersed blanket of smoke, which would be super cool if you have an encounter in a graveyard or a spooky enchanted forest. It is also extremely fun to play with, and the accessories don't end there. One of the best ways to make your smoke effects more effective is to add light. Now, in my build I don't actually use this attachment as I had already installed all of my lighting into the build by the time this had arrived. Retrospectively, this attachment would have made the job a whole lot easier. Now on to the good news for you guys, Wayne has very kindly extended a 10% discount code which is displayed on the screen that you can use in the shop if you would like to pick up one of these awesome smokers. And if you are not one video's patron, hooray for you, there will be a 15% discount code that I will send to you guys privately on Patreon. Moving on, and time for a little glimpse of what is happening inside my head when I am building as I install my smoker into the project. The reason why you can see all of the wiring is because, you guessed it, more reed switches. I thought that if I'm going to trigger all of my lights with minis, then why not trigger the smoke too? So Pippin will also be getting a magnet in his base so that whenever he is placed beside the well, he triggers all of the smoke. This process was a little bit tricky because I wanted to install the smoker in such a way that I could remove it to use in other projects and I had to cut new channels for all of the rubber tubing, reed switches and wiring. But this extra effort really was worth it, as you will see in the final reveal. Okay, finally all of my reed switches are in, all of my LEDs are in, uh, all of my channels for my pipes for the smoke are in. Everything fits. So now I can get on to gluing this project together, painting the project and finishing up. Yes! I can't describe how excited I was to finally start gluing everything into place. This project had suffered a few delays along the way and it was at this point that I was starting to see the light at the end of the tunnel. Gladly I had good company and Jared and I were able to chat about all sorts of cool ideas and potential projects. Right, time to fill in all of the gaps. For this I just used polyfiller which is super easy to use and most importantly it dries really quickly so you don't have to wait too long before you can move on. While it was drying, I actually took the opportunity to paint the outside of the box black. I may do a painting on the outside at some point, but that's a project for a completely different video at some point in the future. When I was watching the movies, I noticed at the back of the room, in the corner, there was part of the wall that is all broken down and caved in. Again, my handheld hot foam cutter tool was perfect for the job. I'm going to make it look like one of the pillars has collapsed, but I also needed a little additional debris and rocks. The perfect material for this is tree bark. It seems that I can't get through a build without using tree bark. I absolutely love it for the rock textures it gives whenever it's painted up. And for the smaller rocks and dust, you just throw some of the bark into a blender, give it a blast and you get a mixed blend of debris. For the front of the build, I wanted to carry on the dwarven pillar theme as you can see on screen. When you see Gerard's build, you will see how he has taken a completely different approach here and that's the cool thing about this build. It's really easy to put your own spin on the theme. As usual, I gave the whole project a coat of Mod Podge and black paint to seal the foam and also give it a nice dark base coat before I do the final paint job. But before moving on to the paint job, I wanted to add some subtle dust-like texture. Recently I watched a video by Luke at Geek Gaming Scenics where he used grout with PVA glue to achieve this, so I had to give it a shot. Just sprinkle the tile grout on top and leave it to dry. Now it does take a fair bit of time to dry, so I decided to get cracking with building a second balance tomb for the Broken Sword guys using the pack that Jared had sent to me. So Jared actually made some little improvements on the box for me. 
making grooves around the edges so that it all fits together nicely like a jigsaw and it makes gluing things a lot easier and ultimately stronger too. I mean, because of these grooves, I would be confident to start building inside the box a lot sooner. You can also see how he has laser etched all of the layout markings into the base of the box, making it really easy to take measurements for your foam, meaning that this second build is going to be pretty much identical to the first build. Okay, quickly brush out the excess tile grout before moving on to the final paint job. But before that, a quick comparison of the two projects. Okay, so I have been building the tomb again using the pack. You can see that my scratch build is here and this is my pack build and it looks pretty much identical. So yep, and the thing is that this took me three or four weeks and this took me two hours, not even two hours. Right into the final throws of the build now. For my paint job, I mixed up some graphite gray with blue gray and overbrushed the whole project, letting some of the black show through in certain areas. In my head, Balan's tomb is a cold, dark place, so I wanted the stonework to reflect that, and these blue tones really lend themselves to that feeling. Once the first coat was down, I then broke up one of my dwarven pillars and glued it into place. I absolutely love how the corner of the build turned out, pretty much exactly like I had it in my head for such a long time. I wanted to give the tomb some earthy tones as well, so I gave the whole thing a very liberal brown wash. I used Agrax Earthshade just because I love the colour, but really you could mix up your own wash and it would do the job just as well. I then did my final highlights with the same graphite grey, blue grey mix that I had lightened considerably with titanium white. And when it came to applying this, I made an attempt to keep object source lighting in mind. I then glued in lots of handmade debris like skeletons, books, scrolls, shields and weapons. Finally on to the very last step, adding some cobwebs. I used spider serum from Green Stuff World. This was my first time using my airbrush and clearly I have no idea what I'm doing but it got the job done. And with that done, I can finally show you the big reveal. I hope you enjoy it guys. When in doubt Pippin, always follow your nose. They have a cave troll. And there we go, Gerard. So it's time to wrap up the project. Uh, yeah. Have you had any fun? <laughs> oh, I had a lot of fun. Yeah, it was really cool. I mean, during uh, lockdown, it's so nice to interact with people. And we cannot do it face to face, but um, we did it uh, on Zoom. We did it uh, phone, uh, laptop. It was, uh, it was great. Yep, it was great company. Um, I, I was just looking forward to getting to the end of the day just so that we could do some building yeah. together. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, uh, I've seen bits and pieces of your build, but have you got yes. your build there that I could have a look at the yeah. final thing? Well, 
sorry, maybe the image is not so good, but um, here it is, my, my final version of uh, Balin's Tomb. Maybe you can also send me some video and we can show it on screen yeah, as well. sure. That's so cool. So yeah, you've definitely gone for a bit of a different color and a few different themes in there than, from, than mm -hmm. I have. The wall at the front, and it looks like you've got a shield, an axe there. You've got a door at the back. You've got a whole sort of different things that you've done a bit differently yes. to me. Yes, and that was also a lot of fun. Like, uh, you deserve credit. I mean, you came up with the idea. You had the rough layout of Balin's tomb. You had the measurements, and we agreed on building the tomb together, but not showing every detail along the way. Yeah. So uh, every now and then, I surprised you with uh, little twists and turns I made in my build, and uh, yeah, but you did the same. Uh, in the end, I think it's it's a lot more fun to work this way. Um, because we don't need two uh, exact copies of this build. Absolutely, Although, yeah. if, if you look at it very swiftly, you think they are the same. But if you look closely, you will see there are a lot of differences, not only in the layout, but also in the texture, uh, the way it's painted, etc., etc. There are a few details like the back of the room. You did a laser cut door. Yes. Um, and I actually also included a broken version of that in my build. Okay, cool. um, so I'm going to put some footage of the screen of that door as well. Yes. Um, so there were some laser cut bits like that. You also did like a little shield at the front and some crossed um, axes. Yes. Um, these are all just lovely little details. I didn't actually use the shield or the axes, but I see that you did. Yes. Well, actually, along the way, I come to certain points within a build where I think, oh, it would be cool to have a broken door, the shield, the axe, the, the slate for the tomb. And yeah, well, uh, draw it, design it, cut it, use it. Exactly, and I, I absolutely love it. Let's talk a little bit about the, the Dwarven pillar. Because, um, I mean, yeah. you've said that you're going to make that available for people on Shifting Lands um, if they want yeah. to build something Dwarven. It's got a design uh, there, are two designs on it, like the one that I did, and then um, you've also done a complementary design on the other side, which was a great idea, by the way. Uh, and, and actually, uh, you've built uh, your tomb with your design, and I've built my tomb with my design. Um, yep. But they're both in the jig, and now that I have the jig, why not? Um, why not make it available? And uh, also along the way, we talked about uh, the possibility of making this a kind of building kit. Yeah. Um, actually, we started off just for fun, but over time, we we, we discussed this idea of uh, would this be interesting for people. So uh, actually, and that's 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 the question. We don't know, but if people are interested and they want to make this build, um, we decided to 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 transform this into some kind of building kit with uh, the box, the measurements, uh, all the little details, the pillar jig, uh, the the slate, the the doors, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And um, yeah, well. Um, we still have to, do, to, if we do this, we have to make some, uh, 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 we have to do some work, yep. make some drawings. I have to add some other templates. Uh, but yes, if there is enough uh, interest, um, we already decided that we then will make this, turn this into a building kit and that will be available around uh, the fall of this year. That, that would be awesome. So basically, uh, for anyone who's watching, um, there's an email address that I've just put at the bottom of the screen right now. Um, if you're interested in this building kit and would like to make Balance Tomb yourself, uh, send us an email and let us know. And then, I mean, if we get enough interest, then we go ahead and we will do it. Yeah. Now, one last thing before we go is, um, we mentioned earlier in the video that the you might be coming to london in august and just to say oh, to yes. the viewers yep. that that has now be confirmed that we have booked dates in london the oh, 20 that's cool yeah 20, 26th yes. the 27th and the 28th of august have been yep. booked for shifting lands workshops in london the venue's booked 
Um, the finer details have to be ironed out, but Gerard is coming. If you are interested in the workshop, that's um, also something that you could either email Gerard at Shifting Lands, or you can email the same email address that was on the screen earlier, if you would like, and um, we'll, we'll keep you informed. Yes. If at the end of August 2021, we can pull off this workshop or the two workshops in London, I will bring this build and a whole lot of other builds with me for inspiration. And some of that awesome foam. <laughs> I bring, I have, I have a bigger car now. So I, <laughs> yes, I will definitely bring a lot of foam sheets along as well. Yeah. Awesome. We pretty much have reached the end of the project. Um, I'm kind of sad that this one's over. I've, I've, yeah. I've loved um, just crafting with you. Um, so basically this means if you're up for it, Gerard, we're going to have to do another project or two. Um, uh, yes. Uh, <laughs> oh, I have to think about it. No, we, we, we will build on. We will work together in the future, uh, but working as in having uh, fun crafting together. And that is also um, something uh, I was thinking about. Um, sure, let's let's do another project. Maybe yet another Lord of the Rings project would be cool, that would or, be or cool. something else. But why not ask the viewers if uh, if they have a say in it? What should we make? That's Tell cool. us. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, if uh, Jared and I are going to do another project, maybe let us know some ideas uh, down below about what we could tackle. And yeah, yeah, would be cool. That would be cool. Yeah. Okay. So that's it. Um, uh, thank you very much, Jared, for joining me in this thank project. You. Thank you, everyone, for watching uh, the video. I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, yeah, we'll see you next time on that one videos. Thanks so much okay. for watching, guys. Bye bye. See you. Before I go guys, I just want to say a massive thank you to Benji from Benji's Hobbies for pinning me up that sick set of goblins and an awesome cave troll. He's done an awesome video about that. And also to the guys from the Broken Sword YouTube channel who have done a lore video all around the Mines of Moria and Balan's Tomb. I haven't seen that video yet, but I am really, really looking forward to it. You can find both of those videos in the links below in this video. And I also want to say a massive thank you to my patrons as always. I literally couldn't do this without you guys and without your help so thank you so much i hope you're enjoying the content over there and um, to anyone else who would like to come join on patreon you'd be most welcome and um, i can really use the support and yeah i'm putting videos out there as well so if you want to find out what else is happening behind the scenes come and join me on patreon okay guys thanks so much i'll catch you next time bye Join Colin Bresseed and myself every Saturday on the Crazy Crafter live stream featuring awesome guests every week from the crafting community. Link in the description below this video.